Tony Hawkins has got a podcast. I hope he's better at this than he is washing the kit because he was fucking useless. Right, I'd like to welcome everyone to Milton Keynes Don's longest running and indeed most successful fan driven content on the internet. Tony, would you like to say hello to our six uh, listeners, mate? Hello, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how they are, Tony. As with last week when we turned around and we said, when we win, what happens? Uh, nothing happens, basically. And when, when we, we lose, win. Tony, what happens, do you think, tonight? Everything goes crazy. <laughs> we have been inundated with tweets and emails, I believe. So, shall we just crack on, or do you want to talk about the games? <laughs> if we must. Well, let's, let's, let's do Saturday. <laughs> Saturday? Uh, in fact, we should, do, we should do both games and then move on to uh, uh, user content, I think. Okay, no, then, so Saturday... Oh god, the usual one. It well, that was literally. I've I've just been on the internet, Tony, and I've I've typed in it a game of two halves, and guess what came up last Saturday at at, at Stadium MK. Uh, well, we played uh, Oxford United. We did, and we drew one one. Well, with, the caveat uh, Oxford when, United. My caveat, Tony, I'd say we played Oxford United in the first half, and in the second half we didn't play them at all. To be quite honest. No, you see, I, in in a strange way, in a strange way, I am counting that as a little bit of progress. In that, it is something that we used to do a lot. Uh, whereas for most of the season, we haven't been turning up for either half no, of so... many of our games. See that's you, so Tony. To play, I to play that, to play that way, uh, and, and I think we showed we showed how obvious it is as to why Oxford are. On the run that they are, uh, and they lost again last night, albeit to Plymouth. But yeah, it was um, an entertaining first half. It was it was comfortable, I would say. But at the same time, you then look at the second half and you feel like I think well, we've got a we've got a, a message from Albie which makes a similar point to what I'm just about to say, which is did we sort of panic or think oh shit what are we doing we're we're in the lead what are we going to do where do we go from here how do we play well obviously based on the first half performance you play the same way but as we know Carl has a a, a very happy knack for him anyway of being able to counter us outplaying his teams and he did it again I don't know what he did this time because I didn't really take much notice but in the end, we were we were lucky, really. I think to come away with a point based on the chances that they had, and you know a couple of the saves that Jamie made. I can remember because we him. didn't really really have that many chances, did we, in the first half? I can to score. I can't really remember. I remember like Kai Kai scored, and it was an all right goal. Equally as much in the second half, their goal really was world class. It really was. If he he could try that another hundred times and never do it, that kid. A crack well, he looked them. he looked really, really good and yeah. tricky. In fact, goal, very much like the impression that we've been given by Leco, Leco, Leco. Yeah, it's Leco, by the way. Oh, Leco, right. in that he can run at players and his end product still isn't very good. Um, but that lad looks very good. I mean, just from that limited amount that we saw, plus the goal, obviously that he scored. And you could say, yeah, we well, he should have been shut down. He should have been closed down. He should have been tackled. But he made the space for himself. And I think if Jamie was maybe half a yard back further, he'd have actually saved it quite comfortably. But he wasn't, and he didn't. So I remember making end, it was a, it was a one all where one game dominated the first half, the other team yeah. dominated the second, and that was it. But it was clearly two teams that really are. St- really struggling at the moment and they're, they're in a similar position to us in that games games in hand from teams below them could be the downfall I mean it'll, it probably won't be enough for for Oxford to get relegated but you know after the last couple of results looking at the table now there's games in hand and points to be had to overtake us and all by teams that we are coming well 
you know, a few of them that we're going to be playing very soon as well after we get just a small matter of uh, Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich out of the way obviously but it, it, I think that yes the first half was promising it was a decent performance it looked relatively comfortable but we should have scored more than one goal in that first half because we certainly really didn't look like scoring in the second half and in the end Oxford also should have taken their chances that they had in the in the second half and they could have walked away with three points as well so it's it was a point <laughs> that's a that. point it's a point I mean I it's can remember from what I can remember I remember like coming making at least one save and I'm not this could have been last night did either we hit the bar or they hit the bar they're not the bar the post I can't really remember well I think he had I mean he had at least two spectacular yeah. saves last night that I can yeah, remember. He did last night. And Absolutely all... brilliant saves that, uh, I mean, to be fair, Bolton, we'll, uh, uh, we'll come to it. We'll come to that. Let's I mean, talk about that. Like, Leco seemed quite upset when he got taken off on Saturday. I heard there was an awful lot of stomping and kicking water bottles about, so I don't know. If yeah, was... I don't think that was necessarily. I think it was an injury, you know, like right. a oh, minor so you, injury. You think he was upset about <laughs> being injured? But uh, yeah, was, there was a bit of kicking, a kicking of. Uh, uh, I don't think it was water balls. He did definitely kick something as he came off, but it wasn't directed at the manager or in in, in any way like that. So yeah, I mean, he could have been the difference uh, getting into those positions as long as it wasn't him with the, had to take the shot at the end of it because because he can't do it. Not, he's not very good at that. It's not his forte, Tony. It's something he hasn't yet got. He's not got but that in his arsenal. Rest of his game, happy with that. Very happy with that. And um, the other lad, number 42's name, I still can't remember, or perhaps Sonny, Kai Kai. Kai Kai, and, uh, Kai, Kai and Matoma. Three, I mean, the other two new boys. Matoma they, and Kai Kai. Yeah, they're looking, again, they're, they're looking good. They're looking there's three brand new players who've come in and are making quite a big difference in our opponent's half. Our issue is not in that half, it appears, no. other than, again, a lack of goals. But if we keep playing like that, in that half of the pitch, then surely there will be more goals coming. Mo's had a few chances that he could have put away, should have put away, again, uh, uh, against Oxford uh, last night as well. Uh, when it went, it could have easily been one all last night early on uh, maybe even maybe even 2-1 to us but it wasn't and again we weren't putting them away against Oxford these are all issues we're fully aware of and these are the issues that need to get sorted and very very quickly because we are very very close to the end of the we're a lot closer to the end of the season than we realise I think and we haven't got that many games left to sort it out I think Coming away from there last night, only being 5 0 down, I actually consider that a bit of a result because they've just been to London Road and beat Peterborough 5 0. They're not a rubbish yeah, team. And, uh, you know? Well, this is it. And and what from what I understand, Peterborough, and I mean, even the most blinkered Peterborough fan who can also be the most objective as well, I occasionally talk to, said that. Peterborough actually played well, uh, but Bolton just scored goals. And if you're a team that can do that and also not let them in, they haven't, I mean, that's 10 games now. They haven't let a goal yeah. in. That's ridiculous. I mean, the guy made a couple of saves, didn't he, last night? He definitely did, without mm-hmm. a doubt. You know. And you don't, I mean, to not let a goal in, I mean, to not score in 10 games is one thing, but to not, not let, let a goal, goal in in 10 eh? games is absolutely ridiculous. And there can only be two reasons for that. One, your defence is uh, spectacularly good. Or two, and I think Milton more so in their case, is that the ball is more often than not up the other end, being yeah. put in the back of the opponent's net. And, and it's something that we've seen in the past as well. We, we, we've we done it to teams where we were regularly going out winning three, four, five, six, and we even had a, a seven. And you don't let goals in as long as you're up the other end of the pitch. Yeah, it's that old football saying, if you've got the ball, the other team can't score. It's as simple as that. Uh, and again, another issue of ours is when we do get the ball, we have a tendency to give it away as well. So, 
I mean, last night we let three goals in from corners. That's completely <coughs> unacceptable. That, to be quite honest, it's just ridiculous I mean, behaviour. That I don't even know where to start with with that because I'm looking at that. I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, Bolton's setup, and I've said this before. Before the game, and th- and, on, and on a Friday, when they do shape at training. They will estimate or have a good guess about how the opposing team will set up for things like corners, and they they will. It's very very boring to watch. Right, so boring, but it's good homework to do. And then on the day, you'll have loads, dozens of A4 sheets dotted around the changing room walls, uh, held up with sock tape that will show a given player's position who they're going to be marking at any given situation and so when a corner is given everybody knows immediately where they're going to go and who they're going to mark and I've looked at the replay of that first one and we don't appear to have as many men in that group as they had waiting to to make their individual runs and they did say it very clever they, the, the chap that was in front of the fellow that scored runs into the Don's defender who then couldn't go any further? He couldn't go around the fella because he was, you know, the ball was already in the air, and that was that was very cleverly done. But at the same time, you could argue that all right, that's his man to mark. So who's marking the bloke who's just headed it in the back of the net? And there wasn't anyone. No one, no one went with him. No one appeared to have been allocated to being marking this fella. And then the second one was exactly the same setup. It was. And the players went exactly the same way. The, the, the only difference this time is where the ball went. And the ball went straight to the head of the chap who scored. And again, those those two those two corners aren't accidents. They That ball has been played onto the head of each of those players exactly as Bolton would have planned it. So they've used that first corner and they've scored from it. They know they can't use that one again. So what they've done is they've used the same setup, and the ball has gone an extra five yards and slightly closer to the to the goal. They must have thought it was Christmas. They're you know they're looking at their they're looking at their planograms of these set pieces and thinking this is fucking easy. This is all we, this is all we need to do. Yeah, that's fine against MK Dons. Everybody knows you can score a corner against MK Dons, but to score two pretty much identical setup and then also be able to place the ball directly on the head of the chap who it was intended for. It was excellent planning from Bolton, but at the same time, every single person in that box needs to be marking someone or at least making a pain of the arse of themselves to try and stop that. any any one of those players running in, getting their head to the ball, if not clearing it, you know? And that is something that is so naive and basic we can write out the list of problems that we've got and we've I've listed most of them in the last three minutes already but I just think there's too many problems to overcome and we need to find another way of of getting ourselves out of the shit oh, and oh, sorry it, 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 the, the obvious one is scoring more goals than the other team and not letting lots of goals in from corners that's a good start but I've not watched too many it. issues I've not watched it back so I'm only I mean, I'm only remembering it from last night, watching it on a laptop, but their first goal, from what I can remember, it seems like three of them were sort of in a line, and that great big massive fellow that scored, you know, that scored the goal, he seemed to be kind of crouching down behind the guy in the middle sort of thing, and suddenly the ball came in and he's just jumped up, and like you say, there was there was no one near him, the, I think the nearest no, the like, Don's guy they, was they, about they, five yards setup, away from him. The setup for both of them was exactly the same. It was. So you're thinking, all right, we've we've got, we've made sure we've got to mark this bloke because he's just scored a goal from from a corner. They've got exactly the same setup, so their own options are going to be fairly limited because you're pretty sure the ball is going to go into that same area again, which it did within a five yard radius. But it was a different player who made a slightly different run, but he didn't have to. He didn't have to deviate. He didn't have to go anywhere and the chap that scored the first goal he knew exactly where he was going and he knew exactly where the ball was going and that's why they scored it the second bloke he also knew exactly where the ball was going and that's why he was there to put it into the net and you can't you to let that happen once you can say yeah that's 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 a really good corner from 
Oh, and that's really good planning. Second they, time. They, they blocked off. They blocked off a defender to make sure that he can't get across to interfere with his chap that's going to head it. Uh, it hopefully, goalwards and into the goal. A complete lack of any thought about what has just happened and how we're going to counteract this. And if it means just standing on that player, because when they're moving, where are what are our players doing? The death. Why? Why? Why have they had? Why? Do, why have they got that freedom of movement in a in such a small area to be able to do that? Again, I'll hold my hands up and I'll say that is just excellent play by Bolton. You can't argue with that. It's absolutely fantastic, and they must have worked hard on both of those to get them so right both times. But they were able to take the same corner with the same setup and pick out two individual players perfectly both times. And they, and they did shouldn't it, have been allowed to do it a second time. They did it a third time because I'm sure that great big fella headed the ball and it went straight up. I'm, I remember that. I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, sure they, they had... Uh, every time they had a corner, they, they yeah. came close. I mean, there was one where Jamie made a, uh, a fantastic save. There were uh, a, a few near misses. I mean, we know we can't defend from corners and we don't really know what the issue is. Uh, and, and I'm not... I'm not saying that they don't know what the problem is. They obviously do. But it needs to be sorted. And if it means that we have to do it by other means, uh, the only thing I can think of is that we just completely put a block in the way and and nobody can move. I don't know. It's just the amount of goals that we concede from corners is, is ridiculous. It really is. Uh, and... Was it their third goal it, where it went out to the guy and he was like just an acres of space on the edge of the box? Did that come from a corner? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, uh, well, um, or was I can't that? remember if it came from a corner, but yeah, he was... Um, Dan Harvey was... Dan Harvey was, was marking a man and there was a suggestion on commentary that Dan Harvey should have done better, but Dan Harvey can't leave his man to go and mark a man mark a because someone him. else hasn't hasn't marked. Him up, yeah. You have to Dan Harvey. Dan Harvey has to be covered. He has to be covered because he's gone basically onto the goal line to mark someone uh, further in, and this chap's just stood there, literally again waiting for the ball to come to him. He knows if the ball's going to come to him, he's going to have a, he's going to at least have a shot on target and. Not only is he going to have a shot on target, he's going to have a little bit of time to he did. He pick his spot and do it. He placed that yeah. ball and he, had, he had the time. He had the time to do that. Yeah, he did. Like and I, I I, I've not looked at the replays because I've, after the first goal, I, I, did, I rewound it because I was trying to count the amount of players that were... Had the amount of Bolton players that were in that bunch and the amount of Don's players that were trying to mark that bunch. And then the second goal... I thought, oh, it's exactly the same. So surely we can't make the same mistake. But we did. And then, that, like you say, that third goal, fella, and we've seen it how many times this season? Yeah, loads of times. Almost exactly Un- unmarked, the same place. Unmarked player with, with time to pick his spot. And it's we've the same it spot, of times. Tony. It's the same spot for all of those goals. It's exactly the same position. It's always the same it, yeah? spot. It's always on that. I yeah. think there was one on the right-hand side but that went through to, uh, was it against Peterborough? Uh, well, they had two, didn't they? And then last night, it does. But the majority of them that we've seen have happened and occurred on that left hand side. Who is on the left hand side? We were playing a flat back four, so Dan Harvey's always going to be sucked into that yeah. goal line area when the ball is on being played on the touch line. So was it? And I say, can't remember if it came from a corner or not, but I don't think it did. I think it was from open play. I can't but at the remember, same time, where is where who? There's a man stood unmarked in your 18 yard box. It Again. Be Jules covering that area then, shouldn't it? You would have thought. No, Jules is a centre back. So Jules is in it. The, the back four shouldn't be anywhere other than in front of the keeper. I don't know then who's going to pick him up then. God knows. If you're going well, to take no out, if you're taking out Daniel Harvey, then they've got a man unmarked on the on the goal line, effectively. That's a, well, yeah, and that's why they've scored. I mean, the last goal was just like. That was another we've given up from what I can remember. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'd had 
a glass of whiskey. I'd already fallen asleep and woken up again towards the end. <laughs> My son came round to watch it and he left with about 10 minutes into the second half because he'd had enough. <laughs> so from what I can remember the last goal was that basically it just looked like we'd just given up again, you know, and just thought, fucking we're well, not Well, yeah, because I, I um, when the fourth goal went in, I watched it for a couple of minutes more and I decided to yeah. to spend my time more wisely. And um, so I had a quick look at the um, the latest scores to see if anything else had happened. And the game had finished. Uh, and because I'd been rewinding to watch that first goal again, yeah. I'd actually got so far behind the game that it actually finished while I was still on the 80... Oh, really? 87th minute or something like that so it was thought, late well, on you if, if they've scored another goal I might as well go and watch see what happened and yeah it was very much a oh here we go there's yep, yep oh, oh there's in the net and it's 5-0 and what you and, were seeing and, and one of the worst things about it very much like when we played Plymouth and a few other teams it was it was no great effort from Bolton no, to to score five goals and and comfortably stroll to to that victory and I mean we we didn't yeah up front we, we you know we can go on all night about how how decent we're looking up front but we had ten shots on target we had two shots on target but they had eighteen shots they had eleven yeah. shots on target eleven shots and they scored half of them pretty much. Oh, I don't know what and to say. I mean, there was a big shout for a penalty, but from what I can remember, the guy was a bit a foot away, wasn't he? I could be wrong, but they were also banging on about uh, old mate's goal. Like, both Toby and Luke last night in the commentary said that he was onside, but it must have been pretty tight if he was. But uh, um, what have we done? Yeah, difference, so, would I it? Mean, you can never you know. tell with, you know, just one camera angle. But, if we'd gotten a penalty, uh, Tony, we'd have to score it. And then we might not have scored yeah, it. And if that goal would have got in... It would have been about 5-1. Yeah. And then we'd so, have beaten us 5-2, you know. wouldn't they? Because we'd, the his goal would have been onside and we might have scored a penalty. So we might have been 5-1 yeah. well, or I saw, the, I saw the replay of the offside and he did look offside. So, uh, But again, you, you don't see the full width no, of the pitch. So I can't that, say 100% yeah. whether it was or not. But it was well, given offside and that's all that matters. That's so. all that matters, eh? So what can you say? Nothing, really. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Just like... I mean, I wasn't expecting to win there. I was a bit disappointed it was 5-0. I mean, I thought 3-0. That's what I thought. I mean, that is what I predicted, that they were going to beat us 3-0. Yeah. So I was a bit fed up oh, when they scored 4 one thing I, I do remember, and it might have been the second... or the th It could have been the third goal, you know, actually. Uh, Jack Tucker kicked it out for a corner. Oh, right. Oh. What, do you remember that? I don't remember that, now. Then it led to a corner which led to a goal to a so goal, I don't know if it's the second or the third goal but Jack Tucker rather than rather than just turn around and kick it out for a throw yeah this is the, the thing that I used to moan about matey boy uh, um, the one I used to have a go at every week what about not Jesus? just you know, that does not narrow it down playing. Tony What's his name? Tell me his name. Ooh, that didn't narrow it down. You're having a go at someone. Okay, that could have been any. No, the, the, the ex Derby, not not an attractive looking fella. Johnson. <laughs> no, <laughs> defender who would never use his left foot. Who was oh. always playing our players into trouble. Oh bloody matey boy that left and we were played Peterborough. Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah that's him. The guy you took against. <laughs> Yeah, I can't yeah. remember his name. Now they decided to turn up for the last few yeah. games um, and uh, Richard Keel. But, but, <laughs> yes, him. Yeah. So <laughs> why, why Tucker? I mean, it was it was a difficult situation because he was effectively facing his own goal. But I don't know what he thought Jamie would be able to do with that ball if if it did get back to him, which it didn't. He put it out for a corner, and that immediately led to a goal. So. Uh, Mr Tucker's not had the best season as we know but he's become a scapegoat him but I'll be honest with you I think it's justified Tony to be quite honest because he's he's not covering himself in glory that lad he, he's just not I mean I'm not one of these ones that oh you got to back your team I'm not backing him because he's shit I think I've said it I mean, there you go I'm not backing he's him not, he's so not having a good season no he hasn't no. the, and, and the, the problem is that players around him are not going to and there is no alternative there is no There's alternative no we brought in this we brought in this lad that we signed on yep. deadline day he's now injured he's injured um, first date training we, he's fucking injured 
Yeah, Jesus exactly. Christ. So we we're, we're now pretty much stuck with this this back four, uh, which will contain Jules and Tucker as the two the two centre backs. Left back obviously is going to be Dan Harvey. Right back Tenai Watson or whether it might be over on that side, Lawrence, we don't know. And we switched it to a three, took off took off a, an attacking player, brought on a defender, um, and nothing worked. And this nothing is the, that's the most disappointing thing, is that nothing worked. We lost 5-0. We didn't score a goal. We looked like we should have scored a goal. We, we had plenty of chances to score goals, but we didn't. And that is not the sort of... They're not the results and they're not performances that are going to keep us up at this moment in time. What I did notice last night, and I've been watching it a lot since you brought it up, is the body language of the team. Every time those goals went in, I think there was when the first one went in, there was a little bit of finger pointing, wasn't there? And like you know, guys yeah. throwing arms about. But for the the next four goals, it was just oh, no, pick the ball. Up. I mean, Jamie let one in. And he quite literally laid in his back and put his hands behind his head for about two or three seconds while the guy went and picked the ball up out the net. You just think, fuck yeah. me, mate, that ain't good. They, they've just, I mean, it can't be a lot of fun playing for Milton Keynes Dons at the minute. It just can't because you just, they must have it in their head that every time they go out there, they're going to get their arse booted. And, <laughs> and every time they go out there, their arse is well and truly booted, doesn't it? I don't yeah. know. And this is, it, and it at is. this stage of the season, this is. This is exactly the stage of the season where you get teams who get into the winning habit, like Bolton, like Sheffield Wednesday, like Plymouth, like Ipswich. Well, not so much Ipswich, but certainly, certainly the others I mentioned there. And there are there are times during the season where teams that you would expect we could put up against, we could put a good performance in against, are unplayable at times. And I'm not saying that Bolton were unplayable last night. We made it so easy for them to to score them goals, and by not scoring ourselves, just made it even easier for them. And it's good. I can I can, I can see exactly the same on Saturday. I mean, uh, I think Sheffield Wednesday, and I can see the same against Dipswich. I can't see there's we might pull off one of those one of those results that we've seen a few of this season but they are inverted commas one of those results one of those performances we're going to go to Ipswich uh, sorry not Ipswich uh, Sheffield Wednesday and Saturday Tony they're averaging gates of 23,000 how, how do you think that's going to go Saturday they're just going to absolutely steamroll us we'll, we'll be lucky if we get out of there 5-0 down to be quite honest if we get out of there with 5-0 I'll consider that one of our best results of the season to be quite honest they're going to batter us on Saturday just absolutely like they'll just run through us as if we're not even there they'll look at that back line and they'll just think yes here we go fill your boots you know, you know what you know what I can I can I can hear the commentary now yeah I can on, yeah. Uh, on, the, on the football league show I'll, you know the, watch, well I'm going anyway but Watching the highlights, I, I I can see, I can see one or two things happening. Like you say, very similar to last night, and a nice easy five nil, but without the chances that we had last night. Uh, or it will be uh, either Sheffield Wednesday, MK Dons pull off a nil nil at Hillsborough. Sheffield Wednesday have an off day, nothing went in the back of the net for them. That I think is our best hope. That's our best that. hope. Sheffield Wednesday have an off day because I do not see us oh it's a goal for who? De Bruyne really? I'm not watching it what's it, what's it on? is it on BT? Uh, Prime oh real? Oh, I'm not watching that uh, oh, well. anyway yes so yeah that I think that is really our best chance is that Wednesday have an off day and uh, <laughs> that we we get away with something. I mean, I'm not saying it will be a one nil glorious three points. Uh, I think in Wednesday have an off day and we come away with a, a hard fought. Well, not even hard fought, just a lucky nil nil. You Tony that's, that's, are a man. That's best case scenario for me. You Tony are a man whose glass is permanently half full. To be quite honest, because if we come out of there five nil down, like I said earlier on, I'll consider that a right result for us. Because <laughs> I'm just thinking of all of all the th- just the way that we're playing, 
And I'd like to. What I'd like to be able to say is that we are capable of pulling off if everything comes together nicely and everything goes our way, that we could actually be a match for them and we could win that game. I can't say that now, and I don't think no. I've ever been able to say that about a team, an MK Dons team. And you know me, I am the ultimate optimist. You are. I think that. We, you know, you think, yeah, well, you know, this is a great bunch of players, and if they get it together, but it's not a great bunch of players, right? Enough. Many of them, many of them, simply aren't good enough. Enough dim and gloom from us, Tony. Let's cheer ourselves up by reading a load of tweets from people because <laughs> that's really going to cheer yeah, us right up. That's <laughs> right. I've got one here. The first one is from MK Don's fan, and he said, "Tough to think we do better than Peterborough against a top team. Ohora, Louis, and Stuart all injured." Tough set of fixtures. We know the root cause, which he says is poor recruitment. Can't defend and can't finish chances. Improved under Jacko, but in his opinion, it may be too little, too late. He's right. I mean, this is just what we've been saying. Has it improved, though? Have we improved? I don't think we have, to be quite honest. No, I don't think we have. I mean, he won his first game, didn't he? And Was it his first game he won? God knows, I can't even remember. Uh, I think it... uh, uh, Anyway, but... He's won a game. I can. I remember that. I can remember him winning a game. Oh, good for him. Uh, I think he might have actually won too. Anyway, I don't think it's improved. I think it's got. I think the pattern has gone the same. Is the 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 occasional win, which has been a bit of a sh- a bit of a shock, maybe uh, because of the teams that we've beaten. Uh, but I've I've seen no what I would what I would what I would class as improvement in any areas other than possibly the recruitment of the three new players and the attacking side of things uh, you know and, and last night that being the standout thing that you could say about us last night was the improvement in the attacking side of things whereas previously we looked like we were yeah, never going to score but score. we didn't score last night Right, despite I've got, the chances i got another one here from Kieran and he's at Kieran Day 3 and he has just quite simply said we're not very good at defending corners a man there yeah. who's stating the blindingly I mean, that, obvious if you are if, you, if you're going to skip all the punditry talk and, yeah, and just go straight all the, to the, uh, the football cliches yeah. and just say we're not good at corners it's it, it, it is, it's plain and simple to see and you can watch those first two and think to yourself yeah, you've just made exactly the same mistake twice there, and and you can't do that. You just can't do that. Once you learn, you think right, okay, they might do that again. They did. Oh, this happened five minutes ago. What do we do? Well, we just make sure that there's nobody with a free header. Right, gotcha. Okay, right. So what do I do? Oh shit, he scored. Right, I'll plow on with these because there is a lot to get through. I've got one here from DB, and he's at at Darren Seven. I think that's Darren that used to do the old. Facebook thing on a oh, Friday yeah. night oh, right. so he said he was very fearful of a hammering and that's exactly what we got Sheffield Wednesday at Nipswich will be similar outcomes and the goal difference will be through the roof lads <coughs> if anything is going to cost us at the end of the year these three fixtures will cost us that's his guess I don't think it's just down to these three fixtures isn't it it's a failure to beat like teams in and around us to be quite honest I think that's a bigger problem but, you know that's where the problem lies yeah, in my we'll, opinion yeah we'll come, we'll come to that and we've covered it the last few weeks sorry but we are getting closer to that point now so we know where the points are it's just as to whether we can get we can get them and, <laughs> no, yeah, and, and where and where we are when we go into those games as well because the it, it, we could be in a position where at the moment we're the team that we're the, we're the team they need to beat. By the time we start playing these games in March, it could be the other way around. It could be that we are the team that needs to beat Cambridge. We need to beat Akron and we need to beat Morecambe to get ourselves above any of those or all of those three. I think you can write off March, basically. It's, it's, it's sorry, right off February. It's March that, you know, is like more important to us. Right, I've got another one here from Ted and he's at Heartstone One and he has said three C R sorry, he's said three C R commentating that it wasn't actually a bad performance is ridiculous. I can only remember troubling their keeper once with Leco's effort in the second half. 
which he says is a good save, to be fair. Other than that, we didn't look like scoring. Defending shambolic, long couple of weeks ahead, chaps. He's not wrong there. I don't think. I mean, I thought it was a different situation. When you're watching an actual game and you're listening to them while you're watching it, it's a different situation to to like listen to it when you're not watching it, don't you think? Because you're watching it and they're waffling quite a lot. I mean, look, even though I think he's great and I love him to bits, but he waffles at great length. And when I'm watching it last night, there was one passage of play where they were they were cutting down the left-hand side, attacking our goal, and they were talking about something completely unrelated to what was going on the pitch, and I'm thinking, they're making an attack here, mate. You really need to stop waffling on. About, <laughs> but but the, thing was, the, is, the, the thing was, Bolton were in no rush. Oh. to Because uh, they, the, they, they knew the goals were covered, so you could have chatted for ages and, and then just cut in for the last two or three seconds and said, right, ah, oh, yeah, he's crosses it to him and he puts and he put it over to us and there's the bloke unmarked on the edge of the box. Yep, and that's a goal. Yeah. I think the, uh, I mean, it's not, I, I feel sorry for, I mean, I always, I always mock Toby like, because, because I've not been going to many away games and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's twice as bad for someone like Toby because he's got, He's he's followed the club since he was very young, yeah. And he was a he was a regular home and away before doing what he does now. And not only has he got to go and work in Bolton on a Tuesday night, yeah. at the same time I'm he's got to that. watch his team get an absolute I kick in. I think he's and been. Sometimes I think he does he does show remarkable restraint a lot of the time because it's got to be so. I mean, we can say what we like, but. You know he's got to, he's got to maintain uh, a certain level of professionalism, which we've never been in the slightest bit no, we concerned don't need to about. Do, it, do we? No, I mean he's showing a lot. He's been a lot more. I'd say the best way to say it is realistic this year. I know we can't be a hundred percent realistic, and I'm thinking that he's possibly. Well, yeah, because I think a lot of that has been coming out of the club as well. You know, in in terms of you know a, a sense of responsibility from the from the part of the chairman saying if you know effectively saying in an interview the new manager's coming in <laughs> and these guys sorry. are shit <laughs> and, and I, I, yeah I apologise in advance because this is what you've got this is what you've got to work with so if that's the tone that's coming from the chairman <laughs> that you know and I was talking when I had that uh, coffee with Ant last week before sorry the Twitter admin before this weekend's games uh, he, I said, you know, that interview you did with the chairman was a fifteen-minute interview, which was supposed to be around Liam Manning going and a new manager coming in, and the first three minutes of the interview were about that. The other twelve minutes were about the issues that the club has got all round, and that that just tells you everything. You know that there is, yeah, you know, it might be too late now you know to say yeah we got it wrong the recruitment in the summer was terrible it's not good enough but where is where is the where's the where's the solutions you know it's like we've it's like we've accepted our lot and I have I certainly have I've accepted our lot and that is that we need to get ourselves out of this and I can't see how we're going to do it I'm not the person that's responsible for doing it no I'm not no. Um, and I don't have any solutions to that problem and, you know you can have your you can have people on Twitter on the internet and on the forums and wherever say this should be done that should be done but I don't think even any of our fans are even saying we need to do this we need to do that I think we've all accepted what we've got at the moment and none of us really know what's going to happen I mean, we what we do here. know is that at the moment we're not good enough we sit here every Wednesday night and just have a laugh. We do this because we like doing it. I don't know what the answer to it is. I mean, even when we were playing really well last year, you know, it was just the same from us. You're not going to get any answers from us. You're not going to get any answers from those lads that do the, you know, the other podcasts. You're not going to get any answers from the MKDSA's Facebook thing on a Friday night because no one knows. I mean, if there are people within the club that are far cleverer than any other people I've just mentioned 
and they don't know how to fix it. So, you know, we're not going to be able to fix that. It's as simple as that, isn't well, it? Well, this is this, you know, the one thing I did learn from, from working in first team football is that even though even though I was I was there for every second of it, you know, every second of the season and every single second of every single game and every training session, spent a long, lot of time with the players and a lot of time, there is the, the people that, the managers, the coaching staff, their knowledge is way beyond anything you could even begin to try and comprehend. But it's very difficult for them to 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 deal with failure or this you can talk all day about we're not scoring enough goals, we're not doing this, we're not doing that. But so what are the solutions? Where are the solutions? And it was very very noticeable for me on, on Saturday that Carl was being very selective in the players that he was talking to in his, in his Oxford team and he wasn't as vocal as he normally is and he was talking to Josh Murphy a lot and he seems to be putting a lot of emphasis on Josh Murphy he even let him take a penalty a few weeks ago which he missed oh, yeah. um, and there are there are points where I personally think that a manager just looks at it and says to himself because he's never going to say it publicly. I don't know what more I can do. I really don't know what more I can do. Right, better crack on. I've got one here from Dan that used to be on the podcast, but it's like a thread. So I'm just going to read them all in one hit. So give me two yeah. or three minutes here. Right, he says the important thing is getting through February, still in touch with the rest of the relegation pack. Our next three games are horrific, including an unbeaten home record of Lincoln. Didn't think about that. But March is yeah. an opportunity full of six pointers. And then goes on to say, hopefully we don't get battered like we did against Bolton. But again, I'm not expecting any points this month. So more match days like last night with basically everyone else dropping points around us are needed. Once again, what he's saying is, it's not good enough for us to be good. Other people have to be shitter than us. That's what he's saying. And he finishes off with saying, it's very depressing, but that's the reality. If you want a silver lining, it's still in our own hands, no matter what happens in February though. So... Basically, he's just kind of echoing what we've said, isn't it? It's not enough for us to be good. Everyone below us has to be shit, doesn't it? So, well, yeah, I mean, but the thing, the thing is that it, this Saturday, again, we could be back in the in the bottom four. That's the reality of it. If yeah. we if we lose on if we if we lose on Saturday, I haven't looked at the the fixtures for Saturday. Let's have a let's actually let's have a quick look while you're doing um, that I'll just give you one here from MK Don's poll and all he's done is he's just sent us a, a gif of Elmo from uh, Sesame Street shrugging his shoulders which I think kind of more or less sums the season up perfectly <laughs> doesn't it if it, if it <laughs> doubt dig out a gif <laughs> can't go wrong you really can't go wrong so Saturday's fixtures Akron and a plan Shrewsbury as we know Shrewsbury have, uh, have won uh, five of their last six and the only time their drop points was uh, on on uh, Tuesday, I think. When they or did they, I, can't, I don't know what their score was last night. Actually, no, I don't know. Or was I thinking of last night? Anyway, Shrewsbury on a good run. Burton, pretty much in in with that playing Bristol Rovers, and Bristol Rovers seems to be on a self destruct path at yep. the moment. So that's good news. Cambridge are playing Oxford. That's good uh, news for us as well. That 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 could go anyway. And then Forest Green are playing Ipswich. Can't see, Can't see Forest them Green getting games. anything yeah. out of that. Lincoln playing in Portsmouth. Morecambe at home to Peterborough. Who knows? Who knows at the minute? Who knows what could happen there? I would imagine Peterborough should should win that relatively comfortably. You would have thought um, so. Plymouth at home to to Fleetwood. I think that's it in it for for that. Uh, so yeah, if there's if there's a swing of three points. Between any team from Morecambe, Akron, and Cambridge, uh, well, not Cambridge because they'd have to have a, mind you, knowing us at the moment, they need an eight goal swing. So if they won 4 0 and we lost 4 0, which is entirely possible, who knows where well, that would put us back in the bottom four. So if Morecambe or Akron and win and we lose, we will go back into the, uh, the bottom four. I would discount four teams up, like I mean, because I think four is green have already gone. So it's between us and three other teams, to be quite honest. That's what I think. Yeah, and I think you 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 can you can count Burton 
in that as well. Yeah, I would see. So yeah. it's it's. I think it's five. One of those being us for those last three relegation places. And at this moment in time, yes, it is in our hands. But when you look at our next two games being Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich, maybe it's not so much in our hands as we mm-hmm. as we like think. think. But right, I'm going to batter on. I've got another couple to go, and then you can read out yeah. one or if you've got any emails. Right, I've got one here from Tassie, your old mate, and she has said yeah. that she's found a good synonym for rubbish, bilge, and she dad bilge on stilts. However, seeing as Posh lost 5-0, the result was written in the stars. So, And a quick one here from someone called Chris Laws, and he's asked, how's the filming going for the 60s Dark Noir remake of Gill in the Ditch? <laughs> that car that I seen a couple of weeks ago, that car's still in that ditch. It's not moved. It's still there. So God knows it's what's happened. There. Yeah, it's still got the old police like a wear sticker on it, so it's still in there. So, yeah. so there you go. Right, have you got anything, Tony, you want to chip in from anyone on the internet? Uh, yes, so uh, Rag. Rag, is he back? Oh, good friends, for him. Has, uh, sent a couple He's going to be devastated, isn't he, with the news coming out of bloody Edinburgh today, isn't he? We old Nicola Sturgeon resign, and he's just going to be crying. Oh, uh, it'll, be, it'll be unbearable, you know. But, have I told uh, you my it, Nicola Sturgeon it's, it's, fact, His Tony? first email was to point out that the Chelsea fan that got knocked out over the weekend that's been all over the internet... Uh, was actually an AFC fan. I don't know why he's telling us that. Well, I don't know why. Um, did you see that, the Chelsea fan that got knocked out? I've seen something, someone getting punched, but I don't... Yeah. It's not my cup of tea, uh, that. No, no, I'm not really interested. And then he said, why? Just why? Why would you go up to Bolton on a Tuesday night unless you're a Phoenix Knight fan? Phoenix Knights fan. I don't, I don't know what he means by that. No, I don't either. Uh, that's a very strange thing to say. Or is it because you're on a midweek beano like we used to do? Uh, someone quotes 65 quid all in to go up there for that nonsense with coach travel. It's bad enough paying 10 quid for the privilege of watching that nonsense at home. And there just seems to be no attraction in watching this garbage home and away. You'd be better get, getting random cheap deals on mega buses. That way you can visit random towns you've never go to in a million years uh, without football knackering proceedings for you. Why you'd want to get a megabus to a town you've never been to just because it was cheap? Again, I'm not entirely sure what his point is there, but thanks for your input, Ross. And (laughs) Albie, he says, Oxford, the first half, superb. Genuinely couldn't have asked for much more. Good intent to get forward and drive at their defence from the team. Should have had two, three if we're being cheeky. Ice's miss from a few yards was disappointing. He sort of hit his knee with a goal gaping from the looks of it. Once we failed to get a clear early second, uh, once we failed to get a goal early second half, the writing was on the wall. We stopped playing football and Oxford were invited back into it. Didn't have to do much to get back into the game and walked away with a deserved point at the end. Bolton, well, well, well. Utter shambles, he says. <laughs> Defensively, I've got an update, a very strange 5 0 because we seem fairly decent and adventurous going forward, just lacking a bit of belief in clinical fishing in the areas that we needed. Uh, the right final pass, the right time to shoot, etc. But all that's a bit pointless when you consider the absolute shit show behind them in defence. Tucker and Jaws are becoming meme worthy. They are that bad. Come Dog, that's his new nickname for Jamie, I think. Uh, Come Dog made two or three superb saves to prevent it getting uglier. And if truth be told, Bolton took the foot off the pedal second half. And if they really wanted to, they could have stuck seven or eight past us. Weirdly, the defence got the best result today. The goalkeeper didn't deserve five goals past him and neither did the midfielder or attack. The defence deserved at least seven and only conceded five, so good on them. I, I, I like that logic. If you think about it, if you're going to look at positives, I don't know. In the January window, we needed a defender because of Louis' injury. Once O'Hara was injured, we needed another one. We ended up signing one at midnight on deadline day who got injured straight away. Why it took so long, I don't know. I, understood, I understand it isn't easy to get them in, but disappointing nonetheless. Keep up the good work. So, yeah, Albie generally talks quite a lot of sense, and there isn't really much more you could say Nothing there. Nothing much you can say, is there? We got beat as simple as that. I've got an update from the Emirates. If you're interested, it's one all. Oh, I was just, I was just rewinding to see what. Oh, sorry, have I ruined it for you? Given. It's a penalty. Bukayo Sako scored a penalty in the forty-second minute. There you yeah, go, I think fans. I actually know how why the penalty was given. Now let's have a look. Oh it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't that wasn't pretty. 
Yeah, it's um, like you said. I mean, you could cut off. See all these like texts and emails and everything else we've got. I could just cut all of that shit out by just saying one, two words. <laughs> We're fucked. That's just there. You go. That's how it is. Yeah, and that's it, isn't it? It is. It really is. Uh, what there's nothing I could possibly think of right at this time, and we have been saying it for a few weeks. We are going to have the occasional win. We we're fairly sure that that's going to happen, but it's everything in between, and the fact that we do not have the capacity to improve on what we are doing at the moment. We really don't. And that's 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 how I'm seeing it because the players that we've got, or the team that we've got, and the way that we're playing suggests to me that at this moment in time, it really is going to be other teams doing as badly as us that aren't going to uh, that are going to get relegated if it's not us and it won't be through any wonderful play of our own and fantastic end of the season performances because I can't see that happening nope I really right. can't I think that's us done so shall we both well doing our prediction I've already done my prediction for Saturday my prediction is 5-0 to them that's my prediction I think we'll lose <laughs> I think we'll lose and um, it'd be nice to get a goal is that did you say you were going Tony hey are you going yes unless I'm unless I'm still um, unless I've still got that thing you were uh, talking about before we started recording yeah (laughs) liquid diarrhea (laughs) that's it I was trying to be nice to you I didn't want anyone to know that (laughs) I would like to be sitting in a car beside you all the way up to Sheffield thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I didn't think of that. See? I'd be, I'd be oh, yeah, it's not like I could just run to the toilet like I've been for the last few days, You've not it? thought it through, Tony, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> Whose car are you going in? Oh, will go with the lovely Lisa, I believe. <laughs> oh, well, good luck with that, Lisa. Yeah. It's a lovely car she's got. Take a well, bucket, Tony. With the, with the leather seats, they should be easy enough yeah, to clean. They wipe down these days, aren't they? Take a bucket and some yeah. wet wipes. You'll be fine, Tony. You'll be better than fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> right, we're done. We have got just one game to talk about next week, which will be... <laughs> I hate to think what's going to happen on Saturday, so there you go. That's what it is. Yeah, one game to talk about. And, yeah, we'll talk about those games in March, shall we, after... Wednesday after Sheffield Wednesday maybe after Ipswich so what I'd like to see before we finish recording is irrespective of whether we win lose or draw can people just get involved don't bombard us with emails and tweets every time we lose and then give us nothing when we win that is so predictably annoying which has been fine it's been fine this season that's alright yeah because we've been snowed under haven't we (laughs) in the unlikely event that we win on Saturday it would be nice to I mean I I can understand. I mean, we're used to we used to that anyway. But I can understand the enthusiasm isn't there, and I my enthusiasm has gone. It will come back. That will come I'm back. Sure it always does. As, you know, you, we'll be we'll be doing having the same conversations for years to come. I'm sure. But I think we started doing this me and you about. 11 years ago so how many ups and downs have we had in those 11 years you know ridiculous just put up with it this yeah and that's, but that's it isn't it? it it's never been like this and I, again it's I'm never been like this I mean from, no from Don's fans you knew throughout the Tisdale times and the Machichi and the Nielsen you, you knew what you were getting but now it's just yeah it's to just be fair no, no, no hope it's never been this bad, has it? I can't remember it. Anyway, I'm going to leave on that positive note. I'm going to say goodbye, and hopefully it'll be us that score five on Saturday. That's what my change my prediction. Yay! <laughs> right, we're done. <laughs>